Welcome everybody, kumusta ka lahat? Welcome to Pinoy Crossover, the basketball show for the Filipino community. My name is PJ, joining me is Marky Mark with the wool, woolen, did I say the woolen? woolen? Wool, yeah. wool scarf, looking nice all warm, scarf. warm right there. And we got a special guest, we got Camille Claire in here. Thank you for joining us. No problem. Now I'm excited because we've only had a handful, not a handful, just maybe like a couple, couple four, of female four. ballers here. Yeah. We had Binky, the dribble, dribble <laughs> sensation and producer of like yeah. open, gym. open gym. And then we had CJ. Yeah. Legendary, through my wall here. But now we have Camille, so thank you for joining us. We want to get to know who you are and then your story about basketball. So let's just dive into it. Talk about how did you specifically get into basketball? Well, so like being Filipino, like basketball's in your blood. So like I would always come with my dad to the gym. Like he would play on Sundays, you know, like the typical dad Filipino games. And like I would just be sitting on the side and then like eventually my sister started playing. So then I got really into it. Mm -hmm. I was like... I'm like super big for my age. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't like the normal like fast, really s like small Filipino girl. So then I was like, oh, I should start playing. But then it ended up that there were like no age groups for Filipino girls. So then I started playing with the boys. And then like that just like transferred me into like going to OBA and stuff like that. And it was just like a good transition because I was playing with boys who were like a little bit stronger than me. So like when I played with the girls my age, like it was just easy. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, Easy transition because like you're Filipino, so basketball's in your blood. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have other sports that you were playing, or was basketball always like the main one in your household kind of thing? Oh, for me, it yeah. was swimming, cool. but mainly actually figure skating. I was like oh, a wow. big figure skater for like three or four years, but then I just got burned out. It was it, mm, it's much. a lot. It's too a lot much. more than basketball, yeah. believe me. What are some of the skills that you kind of felt like transfer from swimming or figure skating to basketball that helped you in your game or so? I think it's just like strength wise, like figure skating is like a lot of like leg strength. So I think it was just like doing all that training, like really helped on the court because like yeah. playing with boys, like you'd think they like be able to body me. But like, no, like I was the one playing post, like yeah. I was never a guard, like because I was bigger, you know, even like Filipino boys my age, yeah. I'm like still same height. So like yeah. I would be in the post and like no one really wants to guard the girls. So like I'd get yeah. buckets all the time. You, know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you had a little advantage over there. <laughs> exactly. Now, yeah. when did you start developing your other skills? So I know like with guys, guys too, right? When you're younger and you're taller than most of people, like put you in the post, be yeah. the post, be the post. But when did you start or who helped you, you know, develop your game, I guess, further on? It was really mostly like OBA. Like I started training with, like I did a bunch of programs through Ontario basketball. And then that like really developed me into like being like strong in my like fundamentals. So I was like really keen on shooting. Mm -hmm. So like I could be in the post, but like I could also take it out. But like dribbling was definitely like not my strong <laughs> suit, which is like kind of like the opposite of like most girls you see, yeah. especially nowadays. Like I was just like a shoot, like quick jumper type of person. Mm -hmm. How was your OBA experience like? I know you you played on really good teams, right? Mm -hmm. If you could just touch upon some teams you played and then like the achievements you had in OBA. Yeah, so I my first team was actually Vaughn Panthers, but like we never got to like actually like solidify like a team to play. So like my first OBA team was North Toronto Hus or actually Silver Knights, and then I played North Toronto Huskies. For North Toronto, we went to the finals, and we we came second. But I mean. We played against Transway, who was like, Transway, like all the Hamilton girls, those are like the girls you go up against. And yeah. like the ones that were always like, who've been playing together since they were like six, seven years old. So like mm. that was really good. And then I played with um, Scarborough Blues. We won the championship, but they were like a year older. So it was like, didn't play as much, but like got to play with girls who now play like D1 at like Oakland, Drexel. So like they were really good. It was a good experience. And then when I was 12, I actually tried it for the Ontario team. And that's when like, I knew like, oh, like, this could really be something. Because I, I was, like, the youngest girl to make it mm -hmm. on the U15 team. And this is the team where it was, like, players who now play at um, Davidson, Michigan, Stanford. So yeah. I was, like, I was, like, this is, like, something. Like, mm -hmm. these are, like, really good girls. And, like, I got to, like, play against them. Also, like, Letitia, mm -hmm. she just committed to South Carolina. Like, I played with her, and, like, yeah. she became one of my really close friends. And, it, like, just developed, like, good relationships with people who, like, really care about the game. Mm -hmm. So... That team, started. Team Ontario. Team Ontario. And were you amazing. younger there too? Like, were you, or were you the age of... No, I, I was 12 and it was you wow. 15. Yeah, so I was like super young. Yeah. yeah. Oh my. Could you talk about like, I guess, preparing? Or did, yeah. did you even think experience. about it? Yeah, general, with yeah. Team Ontario, I guess. Well, it was like, I was surrounded by like a bunch of girls who like kind of had the same mentality as me for yeah. like a, a little 
a long while. So I had AAU and that I think AAU was really what helped me because like I saw the girls like in the States who were like like really like developed and like mm -hmm. strong players and like they were super dedicated to the game. So like having just like a small group of girls like play against and see all those girls who are like a lot better, you know, like mm -hmm. it was just it was kind of like inspiring and be like you want to reach their level. So it was, you basically like played a long time and then I saw them and I was just like, that's what I want to be. So then yeah. I developed into the, like going into a bunch of these camps and then it just started like coming easier and easier. And like a lot of the coaches were like really like they're easy to talk to and like they, yeah. they tell you straightforward like what they need from you. So it wasn't nothing like we want you to dribble up the court, be everyone there. Like we just want you to be a developed player, like a leader, you know, like being young, you have so many girls to look up to, but like if you can show that you want to develop and be like them, then it's there. Mm -hmm. If you could talk about also um, once you were kept, you kept on playing and you showed that promise in yourself and your skills, when did you decide or when did your family decide for you to go to, you know, the academies and like the next level of basketball there? Uh, so it was really through my AAU program mm -hmm. where like a scout came and like said like, oh, they were looking for guys players mostly. But mm -hmm. like my coach told them, oh, like we have a girl who like would be like willing to come down if you guys would like want her. So like he took a look and then like he was interested. So I went down and I was like, I was like, this is for me. Like I've always like wanted to branch out and kind of like experience what it'd be like to be like away. So I think like once I got to campus and like saw like the team and just like saw the experience, I was like, this is for me. And like, yeah. I don't regret it at all. Like, I love being away from, from home. Your, I love it. It's like period, the best yeah. thing, yeah. So, when, did, when did you experience that? Or did you have a moment, like, maybe when you were playing in high school so that you're like, I can make this, I can make something out of this and I can like, go further into this? Is there a moment, like, maybe when you were playing in high school or... Um, I think it was just, like, just being, like, a freshman and playing with, like, a bunch of girls who were, like, super athletic. Like, like, in, in, like being in high school is, like, super different because you're playing mm -hmm. with girls, like three to four years older than you. So like yeah. being a freshman and being able to make like an impact right away, mm -hmm. I think that that just like solidified my like idea that I could like obviously like do something different. Like whether like if I was in Canada, maybe like a shorter season, you have like two, three months, but these mm -hmm. are like, you're really dedicated to playing for a long time. Mm -hmm. And like, I think that just like told me like, oh, like you can, you know, move forward mm -hmm. with this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because you play a lot, Let's jump into the fact that you played a lot of Filipino leagues and then something unfortunate happened mm -hmm. in, a, in one of the biggest Filipino leagues, NABA, FVNA. What happened and how did that impact, I guess, your development and your game? Um, so basically, I, um, I was just going up for a layup and the way I landed, like my knee just gave out. So mm -hmm. I tore my ACL, my, mm -hmm. the beginning of my sophomore year. Yeah. So I actually transferred my freshman year to another school which is Blair Academy, the one I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. And I went there for preseason, and then I came back home for FBANA, oh, and no. that's when I tore it. So I yeah, came back oh, to school with no. a whole brace and everything. Yeah, I was like, yeah. yeah, so like, bad news. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. guys, like I tore yeah. my ACL. Mm -hmm. And then I think that it was actually like a really humbling experience. Like it made you, it made me focus on other things other than basketball, because mm -hmm. like as athletes, we usually like use basketball as like our outlet. So like it forced me to like kind of like take more account into my studies and just like mm -hmm. branch out and like be more close to people and like rely on others and I think I think that was actually really helpful and it was just like you got to like realize that there's more to the, like more to life than basketball and like mm -hmm. I think a lot of us like kind of forget about that like mm -hmm. we always get caught up in the game mm -hmm. but like we got to realize that like in any time like it could be gone and I think that like actually really helped me like in terms of play being a player didn't make you more hungry when you came back and you're like oh I'm getting back into shape like did it make you more hungry as a player to develop and even you know appreciate the game even more when you oh yeah yeah I loved it like I loved getting back on the court like especially like coming with my brace like not so much because like I knew I wasn't like fully into it but like yeah. this year like I feel so good like I'm always like ready to just like play like mm -hmm. I actually want to get into the gym like I used to yeah. like dread going into it like mm -hmm. when I had my brace I was like I know I'm not playing the same like yeah. I don't feel definitely don't feel 100 percent but now I'm like 
I want to get on that court. Like I want to play the whole game. So yeah. it's just like it's a it's a great like transition. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now that brace, like you you mentioned to us before, like you just threw it away. Now you didn't throw it away. It's oh yeah, probably it's like there. hidden. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even look at it anymore. <laughs> but congrats, you committed. Where did you commit? Uh, Hamilton College in upstate New York. And, and yeah. you're studying. What are, what are you studying? What program? Uh, so I want to study business yeah. econ, but you know I'm not too sure. Like in the states, you don't have to like choose your. Um, whichever course you want until the end of your sophomore year. So oh, yeah. I have a lot of leeway. Nice. Yeah, awesome. And what, what are you hoping, like, your game or your, what are you hoping to play like, I guess, or what are you hoping to accomplish in your new committed school, I guess? Um, I just want to be, like, a, an impact player right off the bat. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of times, like, y there's, like, the stigma where, like, freshmen don't usually play that much or, mm -hmm. like, they're not always going to be the, an impact player. But, like, I want to be that and I want to, like, be able to, like, lead the team, like, early on. So, I like, just kind of, like, establish that, like, I'm ready to play and, like, ready to do something early on in the program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a great question, yeah. What, what's your advice to female ballers? I know there's not a lot of high-level high female ballers, but there's a lot of female lot ballers of starting people, to play. Oh, starting out, yeah. Starting out, what right? Would your advice to what would your players? advice be to some female ballers that want to maybe get better? Um, I think just, like, really, you, you want to spend time. Like, anytime you get, you want to, like, put time in the gym and just, like, also, like, cherish opportunities and, like, the people around you who want to support you because, like, there's no way you're getting to the places you can be without them. And it's kind of, like... There's so much around you, so many ways you can get better every day, like little things at home. Like I, like when I used to go to the bus stop, I would like just take mm. the ball. Like my dad would come with me and I'd take the ball. Or like whenever you have spare time at home, just like dribble around, you know, like watch videos. Like it's actually like really helpful to like watch games. Like even mm. not, not so much NBA. I yeah. wouldn't recommend NBA, but like a lot of college games are actually really helpful yeah. to watch. It's just like being more educated about the game it's not always like just about scale but it's about being educated about like who you're playing against like what you're playing for and just like know that you want to do it for yourself and mm -hmm. like know that like if there's like motivation within you like you're gonna succeed like mm -hmm. you can't be down on yourself early on like there's like a lot of like a whole big thing about social media right now where like this kid is doing this this kid is doing that but like you got to really humble yourself and like keep a foundation of like, I want to work hard and that's what's going to take me there, not some like video that's going to blow up or anything like that, you know? Mm. What's the biggest thing, I guess, basketball taught you uh, as we almost end this As segment? a player or yeah. an, as a person, yeah. Um, I think for basketball, it just really taught me that like, you can do so much in like so little time and like it, it, like one thing can really affect your life and shape your life so much. Like basketball has given me like some of my best friendships and made me like meet so many nice people. And it's just like, it shaped me to be who I am, like a leader on and off the court. And like, just like, su I'm super resilient now, like especially like after my injury and everything, it's just like taught me to like completely be like a better person overall, so. Yeah. Okay, when we come back, yeah. we're going to talk about the Raptors. Are they better? Without We talked about injury. JV got injured. When we come back, 